I like to drink iced tea, or at least tea that is relatively cool, while I'm working on things at home or in my workshop. I do also like hot brewed tea, but consider it to be too much of a hassle to make for myself just on a cup-by-cup -cup basis. Over the years, I've experimented with making pitchers full of tea using instant iced tea powder, and I've also used Crystal Light iced tea products. I even used the sun tea method for a time. Years ago, I purchased a product from Mr. Coffee, their model TM1, which is intended to automatically brew two quarts of iced tea in one batch. The idea here is very much like the Mr. Coffee coffee brewers, I'm, a measured amount of cold water is poured into the maker's internal reservoir, then the included pitcher is filled to a certain level with ice cubes, and a few normal tea bags are placed into a brewing basket and a button is pressed to start the brewing process. The maker heats the water, which gets percolated into the brewing basket, and the hot brewed tea dribbles into the pitcher of ice, simultaneously melting the ice and cooling the hot tea. The tea and the melted water mix automatically in the pitcher, the maker automatically shuts off when the water in the reservoir is used up, and the pitcher is removed from the maker, ready to pour into glasses for drinking. The TM1 product worked great for me for a few years, but eventually the stiff plastic pitchers cracked and I could not obtain replacement pitchers without buying a whole new tea maker. I ended up throwing my TM1 iced tea maker away. I also had a small complaint with the TM1 design. To fill its internal water reservoir, water just gets poured in via a widely spaced screen on top of the maker appliance. I found that some flies and other bugs would get in through the screen and die inside the reservoir, so I would be brewing tea using bug-infused hot water, and there was no good way to clean out the reservoir. There followed a couple of years where my drink of choice at home became cans or bottles of soft drinks. And then for about another year, I was making a lot of flavored drinks using the Crystal Light brand powders. But one of my New Year's resolutions for 2021 was to stop buying so much of those products and go back to a simpler method of making my own tea. I was also interested in brewing more than two quarts at a time. Going to Amazon, I saw several overpriced tea brewers that could not make nearly as much tea per batch as what I wanted, and the old TM1 products seemed to be available only online and used from eBay and such. Going to the Mr. Coffee website and navigating to tea products, I found four different models, two of which brew hot tea and two of which brew iced tea. Interestingly, one of the two iced tea models is the good old TM1. The other iced tea product is the model whose base number is TM75, and this is a more sophisticated brewer that produces three quarts per batch. I liked several things about this product. The pitcher, besides holding three quarts, is also made of a more flexible plastic, hopefully less brittle than the plastic used to make the pitchers for the TM1. In addition, the pitcher design is lower and wider, which while perhaps not as attractive as the TM1's pitcher, allows a greater capacity while still being able to fit into the top shelf of my refrigerator. I like that the pitcher and brew basket are dishwasher safe and that the new brew basket is designed to make or take either tea bags or loose leaf tea with or without a filter in the case of the tea bags. The main appliance seems to be quite similar in design to that of the TM1, albeit with a somewhat squared off top profile. Another big advantage of this design over the TM1 model is that the water reservoir is covered by a lid. Although the reservoir cannot be removed from the maker, at least it is accessible for cleaning from the top of the appliance. No more bug juice. I noticed that the model number given here is TM75BK1. The BK1 suffix was not explained on the website, so I messaged Mr. Coffee to see what the significance was and the response was that BK1 referred to the color of the trim on the brewer and the pitcher. Apparently the BK suffix means black, and a suffix of RS means that the trim is red, but the website does not mention that there are different colors, and there was no explanation from any quarter about the significance of the 1 after the BK, and the RS version does not seem to have the 1 suffix. To make matters worse, the website shows the RS model, while the text below it refers to the BK1 model. 
Further compounding the confusion is that a Google search will turn up many photos of a similar product, also referred to as the TM75, but with no suffix, which seems to differ mostly in that the maker and the picture are more rounded in top profile. Maybe this is an older product, or perhaps a newer version of the same product. The Mr. Coffee representative I chatted with did not know any answers relating to these questions. This is confusing to the customer. I noted that I could find no stores in my area that carried and or had any stock on any version of the TM-75, and even Amazon did not have a listing for it, except that some so-called marketplace sellers listed a TM-75, but showed pictures of the TM-1, also confusing. In another chat with Mr. Coffee, I was told that none of the iced tea maker products were available at that time from the factory, or from their warehouse anyway, because presumably the overseas factory was not producing the product during the COVID period, and the proverbial slow boat from China was delayed indefinitely for the same reason, and retailer stocks of the products were mostly depleted. But I was assured that both the TM1 and the TM75 products are still current, and that stocks would be eventually refreshed. Being impatient with my New Year's resolution, I finally ordered a new, unopened TM75 BK1 from an eBay seller, and that arrived in a Walmart box, although the seller's name was not given as Walmart. As an aside, I have by now received several new items of various kinds from eBay sellers who are not named Walmart, and yet the products came from Walmart. I wonder if this is a deliberate and devious ploy by Walmart to sell more product, even to people who maybe don't much like Walmart. Anyway, to end the digression, furthermore, the item I received was the red version instead of the black version that was desired and sold. Another eBay purchase got me a used but like new pitcher with the black trim so I can have up to six quarts of tea in the fridge at a time. The tea maker arrived in a sizable box. The box contains the maker assembly, the pitcher, and the pitcher lid. In this view of the maker assembly, the combination on lamp and push button is shown on what could be thought of as the side of the maker assembly. Rotating the maker 90 degrees on its vertical axis shows what can be thought of as the front of the assembly. The white area at the bottom is where the electric heating element is located. The reddish middle area is the water reservoir that needs to be filled with one and a half quarts of water prior to brewing. The white area at the top is where the brewing basket is located. On the front of the brewing basket area is the small steeping control lever that allows some adjustment of brewing strength from mild to strong. This lever appears to adjust the brewing basket's drain hole size, so for a mild steeping setting, the drain hole is large and the hot water can drain out into the pitcher quickly and thus spend less time in contact with the tea bags or tea leaves. If the steeping control lever is adjusted more towards the strong setting, the hot water spends more time in contact with the tea before draining into the pitcher. Opening the lid on the top of the maker reveals the brewing basket. In this photo, the so-called rotating shower head arm is shown swung away to the upper right to allow the brewing basket to be lifted out of the maker. Here is the brewing basket removed from the maker and tipped 90 degrees with its front side facing up. The mechanism at the upper right is apparently part of the steeping control since it is located below the brewing basket drain hole. Here is a view looking down into the maker's water reservoir. This is where you must pour one and a half quarts of water before starting a brewing process although if you're making less than three quarts then you'd put in a smaller amount of water. The plastic tube coming from the heating area to the rotating shower head is visible here. At the upper right corner of the bottom of the reservoir is a round hole. This is apparently where water drains from the reservoir into the heating area. Here is a view showing how the shower head can be rotated into position over the brewing basket, although the basket itself is not shown in this photo. The rotating shower head name is something of a misnomer since the shower head itself does not rotate, rather the arm that holds the shower head can swing from operating position into its retracted position. 
When the maker is new and out of the box, the instructions direct the user to run a full brewing sequence without using any tea to make sure that the maker is working correctly and is clean internally. The water reservoir is filled with one and a half quarts of cold water, the brewing basket is put in place, and the shower head is swung into operating position. If the user forgets to move the shower head, closing the lid will automatically swing the shower head into operating position. Then the user just presses the on button and the rest of the sequence is automatic. During this process, I took these two photos of the shower head in action. It does not spray water constantly, rather it is in spurts as the percolating action of hot water coming up from the heating area reaches the shower head. When the initial cleaning sequence is complete, there is no more water in the reservoir to feed into the heating area, so the heating element temperature rises and a thermostat automatically turns the maker off. There is no alarm to let the user know that the brewing sequence is complete, but the on button on the side of the maker will no longer be illuminated. There is no harm in not noticing when the brewing is complete, and in fact, at this time the maker can be left as is with no undesired effects. All the water ends up in the pitcher. Since this was a cleaning sequence, the pitcher just gets emptied into the nearest sink. Now for a real brewing cycle. The pitcher can also serve as a large measuring cup, and its side is graduated with two sets of level markings. Since three quarts of tea will be brewed now, the pitcher needs to be filled up to the three quart water line, which is distinct from the three quart ice line. The levels are denoted with icons for water and ice. This photo shows the water up to the one quart water line, but it is important to note that these are not actual measurements. Pouring one and a half quarts of water into an empty pitcher will fill it up to the three quart water line. This is because it is assumed that the other one and a half quarts will come from melted ice. I tried an experiment to see if I could slightly increase the amount of tea by overfilling the maker. As shown in this photo, I filled a pitcher about a quarter inch above the three quart water line and poured it into the maker's water reservoir. The reservoir immediately overflowed and made a puddle on the countertop. So the instructions are not lying when they caution the user to not overfill the pitcher when measuring water at this step in the process. Once a properly measured one and a half quarts of water, in other words, water in the pitcher up to the three quart water line, is poured into the maker's water reservoir, the pitcher needs to be refilled with something. The maker is designed so it can brew into a pitcher containing either ice or more fresh water. Since I don't have an ice maker in my fridge, and I don't have ice trays in my freezer, and don't especially like icy drinks anyway, I chose to refill the pitcher with more cold water from the tap. If refilling with ice, the user needs to now refer to the ice level markings on the pitcher. However, if refilling with water, as I do, the instructions recommend refilling the pitcher with another one and a half quarts, in other words, up to the three quart water mark. I found that overfilling the pitcher now to about one inch above the three quart water mark works well and gives me almost one additional glass of tea from the brewed batch. Next, the tea bags, or loose tea, needs to be placed into the brewing basket. I think it best to put the tea into the brewing basket before placing the basket into the maker. If loose tea leaves are used, then a suitable paper filter is necessary, and a normal Mr. Coffee coffee filter or comparable product can be used. Since I am using tea bags, the filter is not necessary, but could still be used optionally. The instructions recommend different numbers of tea bags for one quart, two quarts, or three quarts of tea to be brewed. For three quarts, the recommendation is five tea bags, and that's what I use. This photo shows five tea bags arranged in a circle, all of them leaning at an angle to provide more surface area for the water coming from the shower head. Since taking this photo, I have refined the tea bag placement. I now lay one tea bag flat in the center of the brewing basket, then arrange the other four bags, much as shown here, with their bottom edges resting on the first bag. They fit better this way and give better coverage to the percolated water. Also, the tea bag strings are a nuisance, so now I pull them off before putting the bags into the brewing basket. At this time, with the tea-bearing brewing basket placed into the maker, 
the shower head arm gets swung into operating position and the lid is closed. Since I am making a full three quarts and have overfilled the pitcher with water, I move the steeping control lever to the strong position. I found that with the lever set lower, the brewed tea was too weak for my tastes. Now the on button on the side of the maker is pressed and it illuminates to show that brewing is in process. I don't have a photo of this. The percolating action begins and hot water starts spraying in pulses from the shower head onto tea bags in the brewing basket. The water spends some time here before draining from the basket and as mentioned before the steeping control determines how much time the water spends in contact with the tea. The maker will work even with the lid open however the shower action tends to swing the shower head arm to the right which is not optimal for good brewing. When the lid is closed, it keeps the shower head centered in the optimal operating position. The first steeped tea drains from the brewing basket and dribbles into the pitcher via its spout, and as shown in this photo, it diffuses into the clear water already in the pitcher. The brewing sequence does not take very long. I have not actually timed it, but I think it takes less than 15 minutes for a three-quart batch. As was previously mentioned, the maker automatically shuts off when all the water in its water reservoir has been percolated away, and you are left with a pitcher full of brewed tea. If the pitcher had ice in it, the tea would be cold. If the pitcher had cold water in it previously, it now has room temperature tea, neither warm nor cold, but actually at a pleasant temperature for drinking right away. The pitcher can now be undocked from the maker. The brewing basket should be removed from the maker immediately after brewing, otherwise any water still in the tea bags might leak out of the basket's drain onto the countertop. I like to remove the tea bags, hold them in my hand, and make a fist over the open pitcher, squeezing out the small amount of liquid before tossing the tea bags into the trash. I tend to alternate my batches of tea, with one batch being plain tea and the next batch being lemon tea. There are several ways to get this. One way is to mix in a packet of Crystal Light lemonade powder or a packet of lemonade flavored Kool-Aid. Another way is to add a bit of sugar and some lemon juice. And by the way, mixing in any of these powders or other ingredients should be done after brewing and put into the pitcher, not into the brewing basket. Anyway, my current favorite way is to use the pictured product, Torani brand lemon syrup, which contains sugar, citric acid, and some natural flavoring. A large bottle costs less than $8 on Amazon and makes many batches of brewed tea. I find that mixing in four tablespoon measures of the syrup into three quarts of brewed tea suits my tastes. Very slightly sweet, with a touch of the lemon flavor, but not very strong. I like to still be able to taste the tea and not have it overwhelmed by the sugar and or lemon flavor. Although the syrup will probably disperse throughout the pitcher by itself, I usually give it a few seconds of brisk stirring with a spoon before placing the pitcher into the fridge. The only other thing I will mention is that the brewing basket can quickly become stained brown by the tea. It is dishwasher safe, and if I will be washing a batch of dishes soon after brewing, I just put the brewing basket upside down on the top rack of the dishwasher in the area where cups and glasses go and the tea stains disappear during the washing process. Otherwise, I set the brewing basket right side up in a large measuring cup and pour in just enough white vinegar to cover the tea stains and then let it sit for about half an hour before removing and rinsing the basket. Both methods are mentioned in the instructions. In short, I really like this product and it seems to be well designed and of good quality and I'm quite pleased with its functionality. I overpaid for it when I bought it on eBay since its price there was greatly inflated over what the normal cost would probably be. Hopefully after the time of making this video Mr. Coffee's supply chain will get going again so this product can be more easily purchased and at a more reasonable purchase price. I hope you found this to be interesting.